What's going on, my soul family? Welcome back to another episode of the Awake with Jake show. On today's episode, I'm going to be dropping in and sharing with you a question that I received from one of my listeners. Now, the reason why that I chose this question is because I feel like it's going to trigger you in a healthy way to go deeper into relationships, into conscious relationships, and deeper into your own self in the relationship that you have with yourself. Now, the question is, why would a man keep coming in and out of my life when the chemistry is amazing? Now, I'm going to share with you six ways that I would deal with this, and I would invite you to deal with this, and this can be applied to all relationships. This doesn't just have to be a man and a woman, but in this specific question, it's about a man and a woman, okay? But you can take these six principles and really apply them to any single relationship, Now, before I dive into this answer, I want to share with you that our next HEAL virtual workshop is currently open for registration. HEAL stands for Harmonize, Embody, Activate, Love. If you haven't already registered and grabbed your seat, I would highly recommend you do that now because spaces are limited and they are filling up very quickly. This event is a two-day live transformational workshop to really help you to drop into your body and release what no longer is serving you. We'll be focusing on guided meditation, breath work, cutting energetic cords, inner child healing, masculine and feminine energy harmonization, and I'm bringing in Melissa Scambolori to teach two of her live connection and flow classes, which is a really amazing dance class to help you get out of your mind and into your body. It's a lot of fun too. It's very powerful emotionally. So if you'd like to register for that, go to healvirtual.co. And for being a fan of my podcast, I'm going to give you a $50 discount. And there's only a limited amount of these available. So use code HEAL50 at checkout. HEAL50 at checkout. And go to healvirtual.co to grab your spot now. I just want to, first of all, thank you for showing up to do the work. Seriously, thank you. And I give you all the credit because I remember when I first got into this whole world of spirituality and I felt very alone and I felt very alone because I was still lonely within myself. And maybe you feel like that now. Maybe you feel kind of lonely, like you're on this path by yourself. But here's the thing. There's a big difference between loneliness and aloneness. To me, aloneness stands for all oneness. When we become all one with ourselves, we are all one with the universe and we never feel lonely. So if that's where you are right now, I just want you to realize that you're never alone. You are never alone because you are one with the universe. You are one with the entire universe. The entire universe exists within you. And I am so proud of you for showing up to do the work because it's not fun. It's not comfortable. It's not easy to get triggered and get feedback and look at your shadows and do this healing work. It's very uncomfortable. It involves so much going into things that make you feel uncomfortable. Now, that's how we grow, though. We grow through our pain. We grow through our discomfort. We don't grow by just taking the easy route all the time in life. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe in absolute, true, pure alignment, and things should not be constantly forcing and resistance. But when you first start out in your healing journey, your ego is going to want to keep you asleep. It's going to want to keep you unconscious because it's keeping you in survival mode. It's keeping you small. But the more you come into soul consciousness, the more you expand your vibrational energy and your aura, your energy field, the more you go into the shadow aspects of yourself, the emotional trauma that has blocked you from being free in this realm. Because remember, you came here to get free. And when you are free yourself, you can help other beings to get free. Hmm. All right, I'm going to dive into these six ways now. Number one, so let me reiterate this question. The question is, why would a man keep coming in and out of my life when the chemistry is amazing? Well, the first question that I have for you is, why would you allow it? Why would you allow a man to just show up whenever it's convenient for him. If you had a cell phone, and which you probably do, and all of a sudden the cell phone service became really spotty and you constantly were getting no internet connection, 
you would call your provider and demand that it be fixed or you would get a new provider. But in relationship, when the person that you are with decides to be a little spotty and have a spotty connection with love and compassion and showing up fully, you just tolerate that. You tolerate that because you're most likely operating from your own trauma of abandonment, of fear of abandonment, of neglect, and not being aligned with your truth. So you're coming from a place of your trauma and not your truth, because if you were coming from a place of your truth, then you would not tolerate a man to just show up in and out of your life and be like the spotty cell phone service, would you? Because if you were truly aligned with your truth, you would have no problem discerning with your divine intuition that this does not serve me. And if you can't show up fully, then I'm not interested in this relationship. I'm not interested in a spotty connection. Now, this is going to be an uncomfortable conversation. And if you're in a relationship like this right now, and you're in a similar situation, this conversation is not easy. It's not comfortable. But if you want to really get free in this life, you have to be willing to speak your truth. It takes seriously being anchored in your truth with an open heart and with love and being clear with your intentions. The second thing I have, are you clear on what you deserve? See how this all kind of ties right together. Are you clear on what you deserve? Have you really gained clarity around the relationship that you truly desire. Because if you're unclear about what you deserve, how can you possibly manifest the relationship that you truly desire? It would kind of be like going and shopping for a car. And you don't really know what kind of car you want. So you go into a dealership and some salesman comes up to you and they sell you this car. And at first you're like, oh, wow, yeah, it's, it's great, cool. But it wasn't really what you wanted. So you kind of just settle for this car and keep driving around this car that you don't really like. You just kind of tolerate this car. Like, whatever, it's just a car. It just gets me from point A to point B. I can tolerate it for now. And that's kind of what a lot of people do in relationships. I know I did that for a long time. We're not clear on what we want in relationships. And we keep settling for less than we truly deserve. But if we don't even know what we deserve, how can you possibly manifest what you deserve, right? But if you are absolutely clear on the car that you want and you go to a dealership and and the salesman tries selling you something that you don't want, that doesn't align with your truth, then you're like, no, this, this car is not the one I want. I want that car. Whatever model it is, whatever color it is, what it doesn't matter. What matters is you are so crystal clear on the type of relationship that you want to manifest. And when you are clear on the type of relationship that you want to manifest, it will eventually manifest. Now, let me just plug this as well. It's going to take some patience with that timing, right? Because you're still working on healing and loving and accepting yourself. And the more you do those things, the more that the person will show up in your life that will also do those things and mirror those things back to you. A lot of times we get into these wounded type relationships and we're just mirroring each other's wounds back to each other. So if a man is showing up in your life or a woman is showing up in your life and it's just a spotty connection, what, what parts of yourself are still spotty? What parts of yourself have you not integrated and what parts of yourself are still disconnected because you're avoiding your pain with all your distractions? You're avoiding your pain with all your distractions because you don't want to look at your pain. And once again, I get it. I understand. It is very unnatural to look at our wounds because it's not comfortable. It's not fun. It's not easy. We can just keep going through our life and distracting ourselves with more work than we can possibly handle, distracting ourselves with social media and checking out other people and comparing ourselves to other people's lives. Think about all the distractions in your life right now. Are those distractions serving you? Are they serving you? Be honest with yourself. In this moment, you, the listener, are these distractions serving you or are they blocking you from getting clear on yourself and who you are, why you're here and what you deserve in a relationship? And I really want to remind you that you deserve a divine love because you are divine love. So if the relationship that you're in 
or the relationship that you want to be in is not a divine love, why would you settle for that when you are divine love? Number three, what is the intention of this relationship? I like to lead everything with like, you know, good, powerful questions. What is the intention of this relationship? Okay. So back to the original question of why would a man show up in and out, kind of like this in and out spotty cell phone service when the chemistry is amazing? What is your intention for the relationship? If it's just about physical, lustful connection, that's all you're going to get. If you just want a sexual connection with a person, that's all you're going to get if that's your only intention. And if that's all you've ever known, then that's just what you're going to keep manifesting, right? It's just that lustful connection. And here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with this. But if you want something deeper, if you want something more meaningful at a deeper, intimate, spiritual, emotional connection, then you're going to have to go deeper within yourself. Because you can only meet people at the vibrational level at the level of consciousness that you have met within yourself because you couldn't possibly understand it. If you had never seen that within yourself, how could you see it within other people? You can't. It's very difficult, right? It's very difficult to see things and understand things that you don't understand and see within yourself. That's like if you've ever met someone that was really beautiful, and maybe this is you, and everyone says to this person, you are so beautiful. You are such a beautiful person but they don't feel beautiful themselves. And when they see themselves in the mirror, they shame themselves for the way they look. I'm so ugly. I got this blemish here. I got a wrinkle on my forehead. My nose is too big. My lips are too small. My cheeks are too small. Like all this stuff, all this shame, but everyone else sees you as so beautiful, but it doesn't matter because you don't see yourself as beautiful. And until you see yourself as beautiful, it doesn't matter what other people see you as, okay? So the intention behind the relationship, what is your intention for being in a relationship in the first place? Are you looking to just have a lustful connection and that's all you want? Okay, fine. But don't be upset when you don't have that spiritual and emotional connection, okay? Because you're just chasing lust or just trying to fulfill your lust, when you go deeper in yourself, you'll be able to go deeper into a relationship. Relationships are reflections of how we feel internally. It's going to mirror all the stuff within us, the good and the bad, the dark and the light, right? So intention. Intention is everything in this universe. When you are so crystal clear on what you deserve and you set your intentions for what you want to manifest and the intention behind the relationship. Okay, so my intention for this relationship, here's an example, is to bring more love and consciousness into my life and to those around me. My intention for this relationship is to bring healing to the world. My intention for this relationship is to bring a family into this world. My intention for this relationship is to have divine union where I truly feel that I've met this person at a soul level and we mirror back all of the beautiful qualities of love and consciousness to each other. My intention for this relationship, and you can have multiple intentions, not just one intention. My intention for this relationship is to heal and grow with this person. So get clear. You could take out a pen and paper and write down your, your intentions for the relationship, either that you're in or you want to be in. This is how we manifest things, okay, is being very clear, crystal clear, just like the car. If you wanted a certain type of car and you settle for a different model, don't be upset because you settled and you tolerated <laughs> the different model, right? Number four, wavering masculine energy. Now, this is something that I feel like I've kind of came up with recently around the, the wavering of the masculine energy. A lot of men, and I'm calling out the men right now, going to have to call out the men. A lot of men in our world have not been trained how to be rooted and grounded in their masculine energy. Okay. Now, yes, all human beings have both masculine and feminine energies. Most men have more of a masculine core. Most women have more of a feminine core. But in this instance, most men have not been trained how to have a strong masculine energy in a way that is not wounded masculine energy. Strong masculine energy does not mean forceful and dominant and controlling. All right, that's, that's wounded stuff. That's a bunch of bullshit that you've been conditioned to believe to be true, okay? That's 
pretty much predominantly what our world runs on is wounded masculine energy. But behind all that, our world actually runs on love. And that's what the wounded masculine people in this world have forgotten as they separated themselves more from this divine love. Wavering masculine energy is like the spotty cell phone service going in, going out, going in, going out. So this would manifest as a man that shows up inconsistently, that you can't really trust because it's almost like a, a wobbling boat, right? It's like, have you ever been on a boat before and, and the boat's just kind of wobbling all over? You're like, oh man, am I about to fall off this thing into the water? That is what wavering masculine energy feels like. So if a man with masculine energy is wavering, they will feel very unsafe. They will feel very wobbly. Like you can't trust them to show up because they're not really committed to the relationship because they're not really committed to themselves. So how they would heal that is working on their presence, working on being grounded, working on being rooted, working on connecting to the feminine aspects of themselves, using their feminine energy to heal their emotional body, to heal their emotional trauma, right? So that's one thing that the masculine people don't really fully understand a lot of times is because they're like, feminine energy, I have feminine energy. Yes, you have feminine energy and you can use your feminine energy to get in touch with your emotions so you can heal the pain that is blocking you from being truly rooted and grounded in your divine masculine energy. So if you feel like your energy is wavering or your partner's energy is wavering, what we do is we bring awareness to that. And with the awareness, we can start to heal it if we are open to healing, all right? But if we're not open to healing, then we're just going to keep doing what we're doing in life and staying in our grooves, right? It's like we have grooves in life and we stay in these patterns. But when you start to break out of these grooves and these patterns, your life becomes so much more beautiful and blissful because you're allowing yourself to truly grow and not stay stuck in this field, this energetic field of this wounded, wavering masculine energy. Number five, what role are you playing in the relationship? Okay, so as I just said, most women have more of a feminine core. Most men have more of a masculine core, but all human beings have both energies. One thing that is so important and why I have created an entire online course on masculine and feminine energies, it is so key in a relationship to understand masculine and feminine energies in the relationship. If you do not know what your core is in the relationship and within yourself in the romantic relationship, for example, if you do not know that you're a feminine woman and you're acting masculine, then that can cause you a lot of problems in relationship. If you do not know that you are a masculine man and you're acting feminine all the times, and, and that's more of your core, same thing with the woman, then that can cause a lot of problems in your relationship. So with my experience, I have been in previous relationships that were, I was more in the feminine energy and that wasn't my truth because my core is masculine and I really struggled in those relationships and I couldn't understand why am I struggling so much in this relationship because I'm operating from an energy that is not my natural energy. Yes, I have feminine energy and I can use my feminine energy, but my core energy is masculine and that feels right to me. So my partner core, the, par the core of my partner would have to be more feminine in order for that relationship to work. Now I'm very crystal clear on this and that's why it's so easy to understand this in relationships. I mean, it doesn't make the relationship easier. Well, yeah, I would say it does actually make it a little bit easier, but it's still, it's still work, right? The relationship still requires work just because you know that your core is masculine or core is feminine doesn't mean the relationship is just going to be a cakewalk. Believe me, now it's about embodying and integrating these energies within yourself so you can show up in the relationship fully. So what is your core to yourself and how do you want to be in relationship? Are you more of a feminine person or are you more of a masculine person? Because you're going to attract to you your energetic reciprocal. And even if you're acting from your place of masculine energy because you don't really trust masculine energy and you have masculine wounds, you're going to still attract to you a feminine person. So you can attract people even if you're not in your natural energy. It's the energy that you're currently in and the one that you're predominantly in most of the time. 
Number six, and the last thing that I have here, which is really, really important, is setting conscious boundaries with an open heart and love. Now, when most people, if they even set a boundary at all and even speak their truth, which is very difficult, when they set a boundary, they do it from a place of anger and ego. And that's how I did it most of my life. I was so filled with stuff that was poison almost, like it was this toxic sludge that when I would set a boundary, it came from a place of hurt, pain, and anger. Now, the more that I've grounded myself and the more that I've healed myself from all the stuff that I've been through, all the trauma that I've, I've gone through in my life, and we've all been through some type of stuff in this life. That's why we came back is to learn how to get free, right? We do it with an open heart and love. That doesn't mean that you tolerate any type of unconsciousness, okay? It may show up in your life. And you will need to speak your truth and set a boundary. But when you set a boundary, is your heart open? And what is your intention for setting the boundary? Because a lot of times when we set boundaries, we do it from anger and ego. But I'm inviting you to go deeper and go beyond that. Set boundaries with love and consciousness. And you can do this with all relationships, friendships, family members, romantic relationships, and the number one, yourself. Okay, so if you're late night scrolling on social media when you know you shouldn't be and you're just comparing yourself to other people, set a boundary with yourself. If you want to start meditating more in the morning, set a boundary with yourself. If you want to start working out more, set a boundary with yourself. Have discipline and make a commitment to yourself. Make a commitment to yourself to have enough discipline to be rooted in that boundary because the boundary is for your energetic space. But here's the beauty about this. When you set boundaries, you are teaching other people to set boundaries for themselves. And that may inspire someone to set a boundary in their own life. Maybe you have a really aggressive family member and they're always kind of bullying you and nagging you. Set a boundary with them. But when you do it, make sure you are rooted, strong, breathing deep, grounded, present. Because the more present you are, the more that you will kind of almost like smother the darkness or the, the pain of another person. This is something I have learned in my life. Believe me, I've had to set a lot of boundaries with a lot of different people. The one thing that I have learned is the more present that I am, staring deeply into that person, right into their left eye, the more present that I am with that person, the more they receive my boundary. Now, if I set a boundary from a place of shame or a place of anger, it's not going to fully land for that person. But if I set a boundary for my truth, and I say, listen, this does not serve me. This is not aligned with me. I need you to stop doing this. And if you can't stop doing this, I'm no longer interested in this relationship. And you don't say anything else. You don't explain yourself. You don't need to justify why you just set a boundary or feel bad because you set a boundary. That, that's your own guilt, okay? That's your guilt. You set the boundary, you lay it down, and that's it. And if it continues to happen, then you need to release that relationship most likely from your life. And that's, that's what I've had to do. If, if something does not align with me, I either find a way to get it into alignment, bring it up to speed, or let that go from my life. And a lot of times, letting that go may look like the attachment that you have to that relationship. Maybe you're just not as energetically attached anymore. Emotional attachment is probably the number one reason why we suffer. The other day I was in the grocery store and I was checking out and I asked the woman at the counter, I said, how do you feel today? Very present, very grounded. <laughs> I think when, when you ask people like that, it's just, it's just like, whoa, someone actually cares. Someone cares about me in this world. How do you feel today? I said, well, I've been better. Well, why, why have you been better? I said, and she said, well, I'm cold and I'm hungry. I said to her, I said, if you weren't attached emotionally to being cold and hungry, would your life be a lot better in this moment? And she said, wow. Yeah, I think it would be. Do you see how our attachments, our emotional attachments create our suffering? So when you're really hungry and you're emotionally attached to being hungry, you're creating suffering within yourself. If you're really a lonely, if you're lonely in this moment and you're really attached to being lonely, you are creating suffering in this moment. So whatever emotional attachments you have, you create suffering and you can even do this with love and happiness because you can create an emotional attachment to feeling happy 
But then again, when that happiness leaves you, boom, where did it go? I can't believe it just left me. That's your emotional attachment. So when you get into this place of you kind of just level out the highs and lows and there's no more like big highs and lows, you get into this place of just pure, beautiful neutrality and you feel the flow of the universe. You feel the flow of the universe flowing through you. That is pure source alignment. That is pure source alignment. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Once again, I honor you for being here and doing the work with me. I appreciate you so much and I love you. If you want to register for my next Heal Virtual Workshop, go to healvirtual.co and use that $50 discount, HEAL50 at checkout to save $50 and you gain access to the two-day live virtual workshop. I love you once again. Thank you so much for being here. If this episode brought you value, take a screenshot of it, share it to your Instagram story and tag me. And as always, stay open, stay loving, and stay connected to that beautiful source within you.